Uh, welcome. Uh, this is Bala. Uh, I am presenting uh, today my machine learning to final project. So in this final project, I am describing Frank Wolf algorithm. It's the greatest algorithm. Every data scientist must know. Every data scientist must know Frank Wolf algorithm. And I'm going to explain why in the coming sessions. So what is Frank Wolf algorithm? So Frank Wolf algorithm is a iterative first order optimization algorithm for constrained convex optimization. So this is also named multiple way gradient descent, reduced gradient algorithm. And so the other advantages of using Frankfurt is it's a projection free iterations. So the projection free iteration means instead of using prior projections, it relies on routine that solves the linear problem over the domain. That routine name is linear minimization oracle. And because of that, this algorithm is so converge early than other algorithm. And it's also is a memory efficient because the conversion takes place very early. And this is also can be used in the nonlinear uh, area. So this can be used together with the Taylor series experiments and some of the conditions in order to qualify use Frank algorithm is it should be convex, it should be differentiable, it should satisfy Lipschitz gradient. I'm going to explain what are those three things. So the first one is convex set. What is convex set? Convex set is a set which in line joining any two points, those points must be within the set. So if you see here, these three are within the set, these two are not. So this is not convex. So this is the first constraint requirement. Then the second requirement is differentiable. So that means a function whose derivative exists at each point in domain. So, so this is a differentiable. So this is existing within the domain. So these are not exist within the domain. You see outside the boundary. So it's not differentiable. This is the second requirement. So third one is Lipschitz gradient. So the Lipschitz gradient is, is a kind of U continuity. So if the function should be, the function, partial derivative of the function should be continuous across the domain, within the boundary domain. So this is continuous, but this is not continuous. So this is the third requirement to use Frank Wolf algorithm. But again, these assumptions are very loose and even without meeting this assumption can be sometimes it gives results. So the next one is we are, you know, heard about Taylor series expansion, how this Taylor series expansion being used in the Frank world. So this is a Taylor series, which has polynomial, infinite polynomial. So in that, uh, depending on the approximation, what we want, sometimes we go with second degree, third degree and all. But for Frank Wolf, so this is the zero, this is the first one, first order. So we are just stopping up to the first order approximation. So we are until here that we are using in the nonlinear problem and using the first order approximation, we are converting into linear problem. So that's where the Taylor series comes into picture in the Frank Wolf. So now this is the Frank Wolf uh, algorithm that representation is explained very well. So in this, you see the blue color, the convex. So that's the function which we are interested. This is our function which we want. And here you see there is a plane and that below there is a polygonal. So this polygonal area of a polygon under this, in this plane, that is our, 
our boundary boundary and our constraint domain so this is our constraint domain our constraint points are within that domain so in this case whatever points in this constraint domain we want to minimize that's our goal so the so first to what we do is first to, to use we use one of the the parallelogram uh, boundary points to initialize so normally we do uh, is uh, one of the parallel boundary point is normal most of the time it's kind of zero zero that can be used for initialization after initialization then our goal is to get the minimize minimize the the function in order to get minimize we use taylor series approximation and this is our function we try to minimize and after minimize that is we use first derivative then we get the function and in that function what we do we apply we substitute all the boundary boundary points and to try to get which is the kind of minimum so we get the minimum value now and this this minimum point which is a new boundary point so now we have a new boundary point this is original boundary point now use this original and a new boundary point in substitute in this step size function step function once you substitute that step function the first boundary point and the, the new boundary point we get a equation that equation has a lambda so we try to solve that lambda so that lambda value which is the uh, the lambda value is the step size now we have a step size and we try to establish a linear uh, linear we establish try to establish but a first point and a second point the original point and the second point we find from step 1 okay. so this is a linkage and using that linkage and we try to substitute this lambda then what will happen we get a new new uh, new uh, partial derivative function so then we have a new partial derivative function that function we try to use see whether it is update with a new coordinate and see that is converged or not or minimized or not if it is minimized then we stop if if it is not then go to back to step 1 if it not go to step 1 so let me explain why this frank pull algorithm is great so some of the key points of frank pull algorithm great is is with some very mild assumptions so those assumptions i mentioned before so those are uh, like the convex and the continuity and a differentiable so these are the mild assumption even without meeting those mild assumption still we can able to get uh, convergence that is an interesting point and also it should be differentiable but it should also satisfy lipschitz gradient but without that also we can sometimes able to work that's where they are saying mild assumptions now uh, where now i will proceed and what are the application frank pull algorithm being used and uh, and uh, what is the practical usage i try to uh, you know go through uh, the coming slides so here is the one of the important uh, thing which is uh, is a deep neural network in the deep neural network uh, what happened they got the cipher a data set which is consists of images and using that image typically they used to do stochastic gradient descent and in the stochastic gradient descent that's normally being used wide day but instead they try to compare with the deep frank pull algorithm they try to see the, the convergence perspective and they found out uh, in, in this picture you see the all the blue lines are stochastic gradient descent and the orange lines are deep frank pull algorithm you see that orange lines are converges very early than 
uh, blue lines those are stochastic gradient descent so that helps that is in the training as well as validation both in training and validation it converges very early so that gives a uh, reducing number of iterations as well as reducing the computing power that's that's a great uh, uh, in the sense of uh, you know uh, deep learning so let's go on to see what are the other applications it uh, makes frank wood algorithm great so typically uh, so this is another example how this frank wool is converges so the, this is a typical equation you see this is a this is a polynomial equation it has set of constraints so this polynomial equation constraints uh, based on these constraints so these are the constraint points established in the graph so this is one constraint point this is another this is another this is another these are the four constraint points now let's go on to see how this frank book applied in this uh, polynomial with these constraints now let's see the first two partial derivative of this function so if you partial if you differentiate the first this equation this is and keeping x as constant and keeping y as constant you get these two pairs so in this pairs we try to put all the boundary points so our boundary points are 0 0 0, 0 and our boundary points 1 0 and we put our boundary points 2 1 and 0 7 then we found that New boundary coordinate is two four. Now what will happen? Two four. This is this is two. This is four. This two four is outside of that our boundary. So this is this is our boundary. But what happens? Whatever the first uh, minimization is getting a point which is two four, which is outside of the boundary domain. So we cannot. Uh, so this is not. uh you know we cannot use that two four so now let's go and go to the next iterations so so we started with zero zero that's the first step initialization then we try to minimize once we try to minimize we want to uh, you know our objective i mean our function is this one and to try to get the you know Uh, minimization which gives a descent direction okay the, what we are trying to minimize the function partial derivative is want to get the descent direction okay so when you try to uh, you know put all the points in that that partial derivative uh, of keeping y as constant we get x and keeping x as constant we got this one and then we try to use substitute this value we are getting minus 32 8 okay so this minus 32 8 that's that we need to minimize when try to minimize minus 32 8 we use dot product and expose then we multiply then we'll get this equation this is our new function i mean new partial derivative now use this new partial derivative minus 32 x 8 y and we try to use all our boundary points our boundary points are 0 0 and once substitute in this Minus thirty-two six eighty-y. This is the value we are getting. Zero. When you substitute another boundary point zero seven, we are getting minus fifty-six. When you substitute another one, minus thirty-two. When you substitute two one, we are getting minus seventy-two. So if you see here, among this minus seventy-two is the bare minimum value. So the what is the coordinate corresponds to bare minimum values is two one. So that is the point two one. This is the minimum point now. so we started with the zero say zero zero and we got two one so initial initial point initial partial derivative is minus 3268y and then uh, we got a new coordinate two one and using this two one we try to substitute in this original equation we got this equation with that equation we try to solve using this uh, and we got our step function lambda as 1 now with that 2 1 we going to substitute all the values in the original function we got value of minus 55 now instead of 0 0 now we going to use 2 1 as our new coordinate when you get a 2 1 we going to substitute the 2 1 in our partial derivative equation 
then we get minus 6y and minus 6y and then this minus 6y we already substituted you we don't apply boundary conditions when you don't apply boundary condition here we already used 0 0 we already used to 1 now we try to use the other boundary coordinate 0 7 once you substitute this 0 7 so what is happening is that equation original equation now become this equation and then try to solve that equation now you will get the that step function value as 0 0.1524. And this 0 0.1524, we, we, we go on to substitute and then we get a new coordinate that is 1.695, 1.94. And this 1.695, 1.94, and we go on to substitute the original equation that at fourth to power one, we get new value of minus 57. We see here it is keep decreasing. This is getting convergence, close to convergence. Now we go, we got a new coordinate. And when you go and apply, put the new coordinate and substitute the partial derivative equation, substituting this value one for a x 1.695 and y 1.94, we get a new uh, partial derivative first equation minus 3x plus y. Now, using this minus 3x plus y, we, we already used 0, 0, 7 boundary condition. We used 2, 1. And now the new coordinate 1.695, we substitute this 3 minus 3xy, and we get the value of minus 7. And that boundary condition, another boundary condition we have is 0, 7. If you go on to substitute in minus 36y, this is also getting minus 7. That means this substitution and this substitution getting the same value. So that means it is already converged and already reached the minimum. So we got minus seven, that's the minimum. If you further do that, it won't change anything. That's, that's where we got that point. So let's go back to the next slides and see what are the other aspects of uh, Frank Wolf application. So Frank Wolf is like I mentioned in the before, Frank Wolf is used across different engineering, different science, different, uh, uh, you know, all the areas in the various discipline. So this is one which I previously I mentioned about deep neural network, how the stochastic gradient is used in what the CIFR data set. So this is uh, like a converging orange one is uh, deep, uh, uh, deep Frank Wolf and uh, white uh, blue color one is uh, stochastic gradient descent. See uh, the convergence rate, very, it's converges very early and number of iterations less. So that's, that's uh, about deep neural network. Let's go to the other applications. So one of the major use of uh, Frank Wolf, it, it is with using in different flowers is traffic assignment. Traffic assignment has been Frank Wolf has been using uh, in the traffic assignment since 1956. So this is very, very interesting uh, algorithm. It's perfectly suits with the traffic assignment problem. So this traffic assignment problem is, is consists of multiple uh, hypotheses. One is user equilibrium. So user equilibrium means so this node A to node B should travel in the same lane and the travel time, this from A to B this way or this route, both is, is equal. That means T1, T2 are equal. That is the assumption in user equilibrium. System optimal is, is if you have a number of traffic, paths, one this way, one this way, one this way, you have many different paths. So your objective is uh, minimize the vehicle minutes. So if you have a vehicle, 10 vehicles going this way, five vehicles going this way, uh, 20 vehicles going this way, taking this many minutes. So the whole objective of system optimal is trying to minimize vehicle time, total vehicle, minimum vehicle, minimize the vehicle minutes of stochastic gradient is another approach which you used to, uh, is a probabilistic way of assigning. So that is, so these are the way, 
And here, if you see here, the Frankfurt heuristic decomposition is, is, is depicted here. So this Frankfurt heuristic solution is exactly the same as previously I explained. So one is like, you know, we get the initialization, then try to get the direction of descent. And then after the direction of descent, try to find the step size. And then using the step size, then we can try to apply, a try to get a minimum, whether that minimum is global minimum converges or not. If not, then go back to step one. This iteration process go on. The AON is means all nothing assignment. That means in the traffic assignment path, uh, there is a concept called AON. Either assign all the traffic at a one time or otherwise nothing. That's called AON. So that's what is stated here. So this uh, Frankfurt has been used very exhaustively in the traffic assignment problem. This fundamental to traffic assignment. And here is another simple example how this traffic assignment and the function time goes by. So this is exactly that T time taken is uh, the function of uh, vehicles uh, and uh, increment. So this, this, is, uh, this is the function which used to do travel time. And so continuing, so this is exactly a real world problem where if you see the jaw emission, the people from George mission uh, is that is that uh, a destination node. So in this destination node, people from different places, how they are trying to reach George mission uh, is depicted here. So this is one, and they have like a three different routes. Uh, one route they can go from this way to this take this highway 286. They reach here. This is one one uh, traffic path. So then this is another traffic path. This is another traffic path. All are mentioned here. So in this all the traffic path, if you see here, this is takes 15 minutes and this is takes 16 minutes. This is takes 14 minutes. And here what they did is they are minus doing minus seven because of they're reducing that time because of certain aspects of uh, 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 they can change the traffic uh, uh, volume based on the traffic volume, based on the road condition, and they can reduce the traffic time or increase the traffic time. So here they are reducing to minus seven. After reducing to minus seven, this 15 becomes seven, and this is uh, uh, reducing 14 minus seven is nine, then this is reducing and uh, 15 minus seven is, Eight. So these three paths, 15 minutes, 14 minutes, 16 minutes, typically represented here. And they are based on certain conditions, they are assigning the percentage of traffic. Uh, so this is 67 percentage traffic goes here, 28 percent traffic goes here, 9 percent traffic goes here. So this is a practical uh, traffic assignment problem using Frank Pulp. So now you see this assigning these, these equations become getting, you know, even with the three parts, we are getting this equation like this. So think about real world scenario where we have, you know, thousands, sometimes uh, millions of traffic paths. So how do you, you, how typically you can be able to solve? And that's where the Frank Wolf algorithm is, comes into picture. So continuing, this is another traffic assignment problem. There's, this, there are two nodes and there is a path links. And this is given by a, is a function uh, time. Uh, this is given by another function. And uh, they are saying is from this point to this point, it should take 12, Q12 is equal to 12. That's what and they are using user equilibrium assignment. So that means user equilibrium assignment means they should not change the lanes. They should, once they start one lane, they have to go in the same lane from starting to end. And also they have to, uh, that time taken from this path as well as time taken from this path should be same. That means T1 equal to T2. So this is assumption, user equilibrium assignment path. So now how this is getting resolved, let's see. 
So this is exactly the algorithm way of finding this one. This is actually typically the, you know, Frankfurt algorithm steps we, I explained in the previous slides, exactly the same. So first step is initialization, which we are doing initialization and assuming, you know, X1 as, uh, X2 as constant and try to find T1 and uh, keeping T1 as X2, uh, X1 is constant, getting T X2 and uh, with that assumption of T1 equal T2, this is initialization. Then after that, uh, uh, you know, getting into uh, uh, what is the values of the function, then we are using all on all or nothing assignment. Once our assign, we are trying to find the descent direction. So this is the descent direction. Then we are trying to find the minimization, like I explained before, minimizing, the function first partial derivative and to find this one, this is nothing but a step size. So I step size or objective function, this is what the step size. Now using the step size, trying to apply in the, then try, they are getting this value. And if that checking the convergence, if it is converge, stop, if not go back to step one. So that's exactly the same way, which we are, I explained previously, uh, this is one, uh, uh, example for traffic assignment. Now let's go to other applications. Now you see is this is kind of another interesting Frankfurt application. This Frankfurt application being used in the in the case of VLSI crypto. So in the earlier days, if you see here in the crypto world in the VLSI areas, there is something called BDD binary decision diagrams and this zero suppressor distance diagram. So they call BDD, GDD. So this is, he's been there since 1985, but you know, because of uh, they don't have, uh, you know, huge computing power and uh, everything because of that, they are unable to converge this BDD, GDD, GDD into discrete structures. So that discrete structure, uh, because they don't have a computing power to get into discrete structures. Now, ad advent of uh, GPUs and uh, quantum computers and uh, applying Frankfurt, this now become very easy to get a discrete structure. And that should open the door for all kinds of manipulations of BDD, uh, GDD. So BDD, GDD, sometimes it, it is being used in the ATMs. ATMs data so that is a route atm based uh, routing and all the things uh, is come circuit uh, circuit uh, design and uh, atm based design all the things be used in bdd gdd so now it's open the door for front fees and with the huge computing power it's open the door for uh, you know it's uh, is tremendous uh, is application changes, application invention. So let's go to the, the next application. This is very interesting application related to biology. So in this interesting application in related to biology, what we are trying to do is uh, we are using stochastic block coordinate front wolf. That's called SPCFW. So SPCFW uh, we are using in the in the uh, you know, human yeast uh, query problem. So in the proteins in the biology, there is a, you know, yeast to yeast, you know, how yeast one yeast to another yeast get communicated and they are communicated with the different nodes, different uh, connections. And uh, here another one is uh, this human to yeast communications, human to yeast, how they are communicating with the different proteins. And this is called PPA network, human yeast PPA network. There was a tremendous challenge, I mean, using how to query this talks to this, what this touch, this is like a query problem. So how do you identify uh, this query to find out uh, which one talks to which, all the things. So, uh, so with the usage of, uh, you know, uh, this Frankl, yes, P, CFW, stochastic block coordinate Frank Wolf. And uh, they found initial, uh, you know, nodes and vertices are 
is being tremendously reduced and the matrix size is reduced tremendously. Uh, so that's, the, that's about biology. So now you can see some of the references which I've been used. So these are the references. Without these references, my presentation won't be not possible. And particularly, I am so thankful to all the people who are really, you know, being providing extensive knowledge in this field of Frank algorithm. I am so thankful to them. That concludes my presentation.